Last night, there were primary elections in Pennsylvania, Idaho, Oregon, and Nebraska. Hopefully, you were watching Jank and John's coverage of it live on tytnetwork.com slash live, but if you weren't, I wanted to break down the results for you today. As always, since the money game is so stacked against progressives, it wasn't a complete and utter victory, but it was a very encouraging sign, uh, the wins that did happen. We had some wonderful progressives win, especially in Pennsylvania, and a really exciting comeback win in Nebraska, also covered uh, on TYT network.com slash live. There were three Justice Democrats not taking any corporate PAC money. Just to remind you, on the ballot last night, Kara Eastman in Nebraska's second district, Greg Edwards in Pennsylvania's seventh, and Jess King in Pennsylvania's 11th district. And of those three, two won. Two for three, not bad. Jess King won because she was uncontested, and Kara Eastman won in dramatic fashion. I'll break that one down first. A progressive candidate running on Medicare for All beat a former U.S. Congress member in the Democratic primary for a crucial 2018 House election in Nebraska. Kara Eastman, president of a local nonprofit, narrowly prevailed over former Representative Brad Ashford in the Democratic primary in Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District. Ashford had been elected to the seat in 2014, though he lost it to Republican Don Bacon in 2016. He had received public support from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the DCCC. Nebraska requires a recount if the margin of victory is narrower than 1% of the leading candidate's vote total. Eastman has about 20,000 votes and leads by more than 1,000 votes, which would appear to be outside that recount margin at last count. So when I last checked at about 10.30, 10.45-ish last night, Eastman was down less than 100 votes with 98% of precincts reporting. But I still said to my boyfriend last night, I was like, oh, it's unlikely she's going to pull it out. I don't know. And I was wrong. Look at that. Kara Eastman is a great candidate. She supports Medicare for All, as mentioned, marijuana decriminalization, overturning Citizens United, and more. Of course, she doesn't take any corporate PAC money. And she has a great shot of riding this apparent blue wave to the House. Incumbent Republican Representative Don Bacon beat Ashford in 2016 by a single percentage point, and this district has a history of narrow elections. Voters here elected Ashford by three points in 2014. Donald Trump won here by just two percentage points in 2016. Cook and the other major election prognosticators think this is a toss-up, maybe lean Republican race in 2018. It could be a pivotal pickup in the Democratic bid to flip 24 seats and take back the House this fall. So time will tell. Will the DCCC, which was backing her opponent in a primary race, uh, get behind her? Or will they basically throw up their hands and potentially let a Republican win because they refuse to put their resources behind a candidate that doesn't take corporate PAC money and doesn't play by their donor rules? I'm worried it's the latter, but as I said, time will tell. tell. Um, so let's move on to Pennsylvania now, where we had two Justice Democrats on the ballot, but progressive victories outside of just the JD candidates who were running, the Daily Beast reports. In a number of races up and down the ballot in Pennsylvania on Tuesday night, progressive Democrats scored unexpected victories against incumbents and more conservative challengers. John Fetterman, the burly, bearded mayor of Braddock, Pennsylvania, won the primary for lieutenant governor, knocking off Democratic incumbent, incumbent Mike Stack. Fetterman, who ran a strong Senate challenge in 2016, will now join Governor Tom Wolf's ticket in November. Recently, Senator Bernie Sanders endorsed Fetterman and campaigned on his behalf. I'll stop right there for a second to show you a picture of John Fetterman. <laughs> Ryan Grimm called him a biker dude in his newsletter today, and I think that's pretty darn accurate. Uh, TYT Politics has interviewed him in the past, and he's just incredibly impressive and definitely very progressive. Uh, the guy got his master's at Harvard, too, so he's definitely no joke. In one district ripe for a Democrat win in November, former Allentown solicitor Susan Wild won her primary for the new 7th Congressional District, vacated by retiring Representative Charlie Dent. She beat out John Morganelli, a district attorney and centrist Democrat who has expressed some Trump-inclined immigration views and recently scrubbed his Twitter page of tweets supportive of the president. 
Wilde also beat African-American pastor Greg Edwards, who had the support of Sanders and a number of progressive groups. So this is definitely more of a mixed bag because Greg Edwards, if you recall, was the candidate who the DCCC tried to push out of the race. He still did quite well, a Justice Democrat, uh, as it was pretty much a three-horse race, and the results were very close, even though he did come in third. But I am glad that Susan Wilde won over Morgan Ellie as she is more progressive than him, even though she is less progressive than the Justice Democrat Greg Edwards. It was a crowded race, and I think the progressive vote was kind of split here. She was backed by Emily's List and had way more exposure than Edwards because of that, even though the DCCC thing did become a national story. So I wouldn't frame this as a progressive victory in the way that the Daily Beast is here, but again, not a terrible result. It could have been that guy, Morganelli, who likes Trump as a Democrat. <laughs> uh, but what is exciting is that Jess King has officially moved on to the general election in Pennsylvania's 11th district. She's probably one of the most well-known Justice Democrats in the country and has been endorsed by Bernie Sanders. She will be running against Representative Lloyd Smucker in a district that Trump won by 26 points. So a, an uphill battle, but she is extremely impressive. Can she flip that district? If she can, the blue wave is so real. <laughs> And the Democrats on the national level can no longer ignore the power of not taking corporate money and what that brings to a campaign. If she's able to flip that district, they will be forced to listen. Well, at least hopefully, that's what I'm hoping. And a heads up, the next primary election is now less than a week away, May 22nd. Kentucky, Arkansas, and Georgia, and the Texas runoffs begin, where there are multiple Justice Democrats on the ballot uh, in Texas. Lori Birch in Texas's third, uh, Laura Moser in Texas's seventh, Mary Wilson in the 21st, and Rick Trevino in the 23rd. There is one JD candidate in Georgia too, Lisa Ring, uh, in the first district. So just stay involved, keep paying attention, and slowly but surely we will bring actual progressive Democrats to Congress, and there will be no going back. I really believe so.